What's up, beautiful people, and welcome to Inside Out Empowerment, where we are examining the science of personal excellence through the very real experience of today's most powerful thinkers, professional athletes, and the world's greatest entrepreneurs. We learn the mechanisms for designing the life and the results of our dreams, starting from the inside out. I'm entrepreneur Joshua Nussbaum and your host. On today's session, we're going to be discussing the concept and the very, very, very important muscle of self-validation. Self-validation is something that I know I had to develop, um, acknowledging and recognizing my own strengths um, and reinforcing them when I do a good job. It's something that I've seen amongst many, many, many other leaders of large organizations, teams, um, successful athletes have the capacity to recognize the things that they do well. Um, The definition of validation is recognition or affirmation that a person or their feelings and opinions are valid or worthwhile. If you ever want to be a mover or shaker and create something of value and have the courage to travel your own path, you have to have the ability to look internally and acknowledge what is. Um, Acknowledge your weaknesses openly and honestly with yourself. Um, Be able to take a moral inventory and develop a capacity to be able to recognize your strengths and your positive actions. You know, self-validation is is a really ironic dichotomy, right? Because people confuse it with with ego, um, and it really is not ego. In fact, ironically, most of the people with a very large ego externally uh, are that way because they have an inability to flow hardcore self-love. So they develop a hard exterior, um, showing the world that they're unaffected and that they don't need your approval or your support. Uh, ironically, the people that can really acknowledge the things that they're super good at, um, as well as the the things that they're not so good at, are generally more raw and vulnerable and honest um, when you're communicating with them. They're more capable of receiving feedback. So what I'm inviting you to do, one of the things I'm inviting you to do um, through today's session is drop the guard a little bit. Drop whatever um, predisposition or prejudice you have about telling yourself that you're fucking awesome and being able to take a hard look at yourself and communicate to yourself internally what it is that you enjoy about yourself. Um, You know, it was a practice through um, a really awesome leadership seminar that I did um, where they forced us to write love letters to ourselves on a daily basis. And it's a practice that seemed really goofy at first. Um, And then what's actually inspiring today's topic is I I recently stumbled across an old journal from 2014 from years ago and um, I wasn't quite as established. I was in a little bit of a difficult position financially but emotionally incredibly incredibly strong um, and writing to myself frequently and I stumbled across one of these letters um, which inspired me to talk about the purpose of being able to hold your position in space, being able to be unshakable And that starts with the foundation of being able to acknowledge what it is that you're good at. I'm inviting you to to drop the necessity to externally defend yourself, your beliefs, your positions, or your actions. Because in reality, that generally derives from a position of feeling insecure. Um, Internally, all of us are most certainly the hardest critics. So instead of being externally brash and harsh and defensive and then internally, you know, being overly critical, I would like to invite you to practice internally being incredibly loving and then just watch what happens uh, externally as a result of of practicing that. Uh, You know, one of my favorite quotes that uh, T. Harv Eker said or wrote, I should say, in Secrets of the Millionaire Mind, which is a great book for up and coming budding entrepreneurs Um, is whatever you put your attention on expands. Um, It might sound silly to sit there and say, hey, I really love the way you brushed your teeth this morning, got out of bed, set your kid up for success, cooked him an awesome breakfast, reinforced the fact that he's an awesome badass and, you know, is in control of his environment, sent him to school with a, a kiss and a hug and some positivity. 
um, so that he could be the best third grader he could possibly be. And then you went to the office and you really gave it your best. I really liked the way you handled your phone call with so-and-so, you know, but what you put your attention on expands. If at the end of the day, you don't have the ability to say, hey, add a boy, Joshua, if your name's Joshua, that's what I say, um, you're going to need to start searching for it externally. So operating from the position of what you put your attention on expands as you continue to validate yourself for the things that you're doing well in life, you're going to realize or notice a beautiful phenomena occur that those pieces that you do well start to become a more dominant force in your personality. It's not to say that you ignore your shortcomings or you're not constantly working on yourself. But developing the muscle, which is really all it is, to say, hey, I did these three things really freaking well today, and I want to acknowledge you, or I want to acknowledge myself for X, Y, and Z, it programs your subconscious mind, A, saying that you're doing something well, which builds self-confidence and, and reassures your position in the world, and B, it's going to strengthen those qualities within yourself. You know, in such a socially connected world, I've noticed that we've started to rely on external validation as a reinforcement way too much. Self-validation strengthens our core and internal confidence, giving us the capacity to create and to develop and to adventure and to be a pioneer in spite of the naysayers. You know, look, truth is not determined by majority vote. So don't fucking act like it is. I mean, I really love that quote because so many people have an idea or a concept or are enthused about something and they allow their bubble to be popped because they share it with someone else before it's a proven concept and they haven't enrolled other people in their vision yet. If you want to have the capacity to develop that ability to feel good and that internal security where you're an unshakable force you got to develop the capacity to acknowledge what it is that you do well. You know, they, I've seen a million studies about how uh, celebrities a lot of the time are the most insecure people. And I think a lot of the reason that is is because they have become so accustomed to the external validation that comes from their social media or the press or everyone knowing their name. And if you have a model, say, and they're, you know, constantly walking around and people are stopping them for pictures or, you know, they have a, a boyfriend or a girlfriend that's going, you're so awesome, you're so awesome, you're so awesome. It really makes sense that their me internal mechanism and their muscle to say, hey, I'm really awesome and I did this really well starts to become a little bit weak or atrophied because the world around them is giving them so much love for being sexy or successful or smart and you know, I'm not telling you to, to create a false sense of whatever, right? I'm not telling you to just jerk yourself off here. I want you to develop the ability and the muscle through practice of loving yourself with valid points of your strengths. And you're going to watch the second great phenomena happen where you get to start taking people's criticism as feedback instead of taking it personally and feeling defensive, which is going to make you so much more effective at creating your life through design and living an empowered life, starting from the inside out, instead of needing the constant you know, critics or love from your haters or your followers um, to dictate whether or not you're doing the right thing. There's another very interesting irony to this, that the more successful you become in life or the more competent you become at your craft or your trade or your daily tasks, generally the higher you rise up in an organization. Um, someone that is at the peak of their organization, you know, a CEO or a sole proprietor of a small business, they don't have anyone above them in the organization to pat them on the head and say, add a boy. You know, when you're an employee, you generally have a box built around you or you have your marching orders of, I want you to get this done. I want you to get this done. I want you to get this done. And when you go and you get those things done, you get patted on the head or the back. You get a high five or a chest bump. You have somebody that says, hey, I told you to do this. I gave you your orders or your directives. You followed them well. You did it with, you know, shining colors. Great job. 
when you're at the pinnacle of an organization or even a project, a lot of the time you don't know if what you're doing is right and you have to be the person that has enough emotional fortitude and tenacity and strength and self-belief to be able to just make your best judgment call based on the information that you have and follow your heart and your instinct. That is not something that is someone is just born with. It's something that you develop by practicing a couple of different techniques. And one of the techniques that massively strengthens the core of who you are is your ability to acknowledge yourself for the things that you are good at or things that you're doing well. To develop the courage to powerfully and vulnerably follow your heart, you have to learn to recognize yourself. And speaking of vulnerability and being able to powerfully share and be not immune, but um, resistive or resistant, excuse me, um, to external criticism, uh, I am deciding to read you um, that love letter that I wrote to myself. Let me find this bad boy. This is from June 16th, 2014. So it was a little over three years ago. I said, Joshua, I love the way that you persevere. You ask for big things and you get big things. You have more to be grateful for than the average bear. And this is a direct result of your actions and your decisions that you make on a regular basis. I love, acknowledge, and admire you for that. I would also like to remind you that energy comes as a dichotomy. Not only does up come with down, it also defines it, as you can't have one without the other. With this said, I'd like to offer you Andrew Carnegie's words. If you wish to live a life free of criticism, think nothing, do nothing, and be nothing. Well, you don't need me to tell you, you are most certainly something. You are a great many things. And it's with this in mind that I love you enough to offer you this perspective when you forget. When you are experiencing large amounts of resistance, criticism, or negativity, instead of feeling deterred from your purpose, allow it to dictate quite the opposite. If people are pushing on you in a massive way, it's only because you are generating a huge energetic push outward, and thus, you are, per usual, exactly where you need to be. Of course you know this because your instincts are strong and you follow them regularly. I'm reminding you, stay the course. Don't just stay the course, but have the frickin' stones to enroll others to stay right along with you. This world is a masterpiece. Just because it is disguised as a block of granite doesn't mean that the beautiful statue isn't hiding beneath it, ready to be chipped away at. I know that you've got what it takes to reveal all the beauty in this world hiding right beneath the surface. You, like the world, are a masterpiece in progress. Keep chipping. You're doing great. I love you. Look, I'm not going to lie to you. There was a little bit of hesitation and debate internally whether or not I was going to share that letter with you. Um, it's one of hundreds that I've written, and I got in the habit of doing that uh, during a leadership course that I was taking, and it ended up being a really pivotal mechanism and muscle to strengthen in my life that has allowed me to become the person that I am. And while still very, very far from perfect, I like to think that I live a pretty empowered life. And because I've practiced this muscle, I'm able in this way and in other ways to be able to connect with my vision more than the fear of how it's going to be received. And I think this is a good example of that because yes, while there are, it is the human element of not sure how it's going to be received or judged or it's, you know, intense vulnerability. It's me writing a letter to myself in a journal, um, you know, where when I'm in bed or at my desk or it's a, it's a safe space, it's way different putting it out, you know, on the internet. But the reality is my intention and my vision is to elevate the consciousness of humanity. I believe that all of us deserve to be able to live an empowered life. And this mechanism and this technique helps to strengthen that, that and support that starting from the inside out. It's not something that just happens overnight. So on that note, I would like to invite you to do the following exercise. Every morning for one week when you wake up, 
I'd like you to state your name or write down your name and say, I love you because, and give me three bullets or give yourself three bullets. It can be something as simple as because I choose to, or traits or qualities that you have, or the way you handle certain situations. And day after day, they can be the same things as long as you're reconnecting with the feeling and the sentiment that made you write it originally. This sets you up for success in the day. And the second part of this exercise is every morning before you go to sleep, I want you to say your name or write your name and say, I would like to acknowledge you for. It's a slightly different mechanism But at the end of the day, you get to acknowledge yourself for your ways of being or for the way you showed up in a conversation or in the world in general. Um, You you could have done most of the day shitty and been really tired, but say, Joshua, I'd like to acknowledge you for getting up out of bed and doing your best with how you were feeling or putting your best foot forward with this or the way you handled that. And I want you to acknowledge yourself for three things that you did well. Validate and acknowledge traits and, be I'm sorry, behaviors mostly um, that you would like to repeat. And you're going to watch them start to strengthen. After you've done this for five days, um, once a week, and I like to do this on Sunday night, write yourself a letter as if you were your own life coach, um, validating yourself for the things that you did well the traits that you have as a human being and give yourself guidance with truths that you already know inside, but are healthy to remind somebody. So if you are the person guiding you, which really to, to a great extent you are, I want you to write yourself a letter. The length doesn't really matter. Give it a little bit of thought and write a love letter like the one that I shared with you. I'd really like to see Uh, your feedback on this or what changes or what opens up for you after uh, having practiced these for, I don't know, a week. Uh, If you do the the exercise in the morning, I love you because, and three bullets. The exercise at night, I want to acknowledge you for, and three bullets. And you write yourself a love letter. Um, Please share with me your thoughts, comments, and effect that it's having on your life, your demeanor, your actions, and what results you're able to create. As always, if you've liked what you've heard and you feel like it's something that somebody you like or love could value from hearing, please, by all means, share this with your friends, uh, like it, comment, review it, and let's continue to live empowered lives. Talk to you soon.